I'm super excited. Today we're gonna to be comparing two of my most favorite chairs from Steelcase, the EMEA versus the Leaf. These are two chairs that I've had extensive time in myself and actually use as daily drivers. Now, this chair right here, the EMEA, I think is in my opinion, the most underrated chair out there. But I do think the Leap is a great option as well. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing all my opinions on both of these and let you know what one I think is the best overall. With that, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing that we need to talk about is the pricing for both of these chairs as they are quite a bit different. Now the EMEA chair as it's loaded up here with the four-way adjustable arm set, the height adjustable lumbar, and just the standard casters retails for about $850 on steelcase.com. Meanwhile, the Leap as it sits with the four-way adjustable arm set and the height adjustable lumbar, same carpet casters, is about $1,150. So there's a $300 difference just between these two chairs as they're set up today. So with such a large difference in cost, you have to wonder, is there a significant difference to the tune of $300 in build quality between the EMEA and the Leap chair? And me personally, from my own experience, I don't really believe that there is. A lot of these chairs are sharing many of the same quality of components, whether we're looking at just the upholstery itself being the same, the foam that they're using in the seat and the back pads, the casters, the cylinders, the quality of maybe some of the plastics, they're really almost all exactly the same. There is differences in the molds and the shapes and some of the customizations of some of these chairs and the way that they work. But overall, I think that both of these chairs are equal when it comes to build quality. Ergonomic adjustments on your high-end chair are super important. And I think that's why these two chairs rank high because they do come with most of the adjustments that you would want to really kind of fine tune to fit your body so that it fits you and you're not fitting it. Now, when we look at some of the basic functions on these chairs, they both come with seat height adjustment, which is going to accommodate for different heights of people. Steelcase really does focus on fitting the 95th percentile. So essentially from about five foot, five foot one, up to about six, five, six, six. You can activate the seat height adjustment with a lever on the side of the chair. And actually the structure of the seat design itself is the same between these two chairs. So how the height adjustment works and how the depth adjustment works on the side is going to be the same. How they lock in place also going to be the same. Now seat depth adjustment, very similar to seat height adjustment is important to really just fit different lengths of legs properly. Moving on from these two adjustments, the arm adjustments. So four-way adjustable arm sets is something that I would highly recommend for these chairs if you're looking at the Steelcase line. They are so widely adjustable. Now, not quite as adjustable as say a gesture chair, but it's one of the most, I think, adjustable sets of arms in the market. So you've got your width adjustment, you've got your depth adjustment, you have a pivot function, and then of course you have your height adjustment as well. These are wide ranging and should fit most people pretty well. Looking at the backrest, the adjustment on the backrest for both of these chairs is quite a bit different, but really what we look at from Steelcase in general is the fact that they're trying to actively promote movement in the chair. So when we look at the live lumbar that's on the EMEA chair, a lot of times when you see an EMEA chair, you look at it and you're like, really, there's really nothing going on with this chair. And that is actually by design. As they said when they designed it, they were sort of taking the chair and flipping it inside out to hide all of the uniqueness of it inside. So it does have this height adjustable lumbar feature that you can see as I'm moving it up and down. Now you can feel this, and I think that this lumbar is more pronounced than the gesture, but not quite as pronounced as say the leap chair. So as you're moving it up and down, you can feel it. Now, something that's really unique about this is how it's actually moving inside the backrest. So I'm gonna pull another chair that I have here where I actually took I took the back pad off of the chair and you can see their live lumbar system that's in here and how it actually moves and adjusts as you're sitting in the chair. You can see this is the lumbar support and this is for the upper back. So as you're kind of moving in the chair and changing your positioning, your posture, it's providing good support for your spine and acting in a natural way to keep the proper S shape in your back. Something really cool about this though is when you move it up and down, you can see not only is it moving this lumbar up and down, and it's a pretty significant distance up the backrest, it's also moving the upper back support with it as well. So when you look at, say, the height adjustable lumbar feature on the Leap chair, it's really hyper-focused in the lower region, where this chair with the live lumbar is in your upper back as well. So it's really a unique function that most people wouldn't even know is there. Now the Leap's back is quite a bit different. It has live back technology. It is probably my preferred 
option when it comes to these two chairs. While I do like the EMEA quite a bit, I don't think it has quite as pronounced lumbar as I had mentioned before. And the reason for it is because of the tension knob that's found here in the lower part of the back on the leap. And so you can see as you're rotating the knob, what it does is it increases the tension in the lower lumbar region of the chair, which feels extremely pronounced. Some people don't like it. I personally prefer it. Now, if you couple that with this height adjustment feature right here, you can really feel that in the lower part of your back. As you recline back in the chair, again, this is staying very stiff in your lower back, and if you like to recline and you wanna have consistent support in your lower back, this is probably the better option of the two. The other thing that you'll notice in it is just how much more flexible it is and still staying consistent in the lower lumbar region because of this tension knob. The last major difference between these two chairs is the actual tilt function of both of them. Now they are quite a bit different. When we look at the Leap, the higher end model, this is one of the reasons why it is more expensive. And it comes with what's called a backstop or tilt limiting function. So you can see this is in its all the way backstop position. If I click it up into the middle, you can see it's stopping sort of halfway. But what it's not doing and what you find on a lot of lower cost units is that it will, you tilt and you lock and then you stay in that position. A backstop is allowing continued movement in the chair back to that desired position. So people who like to task in a recline position, this allows you to do that, but also still have continued movement through the day, which I think is a unique function. And if you're someone who likes that movement, it could be a good fit for you and it doesn't really lock you down in one spot. So when we look at the EMEA chair, the difference really here is that it doesn't have any backstop in between all the way back and all the way up. So there's a lever on the side here. You can see when I flip it in, it's locked upright. When I unlock it, it allows me to go all of the way back into a full recline position. There is no potential to stop the back anywhere else. Now, I personally don't mind that for me, how I work. And what I tend to do is if I want to find a position somewhere in between, if I'm sort of you know, working like this, I just crank up the tension. It makes it a little bit more difficult to recline back, but because of the design and the sliding seat function, how the actual chair reclines back, the friction actually holds you in place, which you find in this chair and the Leap as well. But the one thing that you need to take note of because of all of this friction that's in the chair by design is the fact that these really aren't great options for those who like to recline and sort of rock back and forth in the chair. The movement on it doesn't feel quite as smooth as say that of an era. And so I wouldn't recommend this type of chair if you're going to want to do that type of motion. The last thing that we're going to be comparing is probably one of the most important and that's comfort. It's also one of the most subjective things, but I've got a ton of experience in both of these chairs as I've used the Leap every day for almost three years now and the EMEA about a year now I've been using it every day as well. So you probably wonder, how does that happen? Well, the EMEA now is my daily driver here at work. I use it every day at work and the Leap is in my home office, which I also use every day. And now as I'm saying this, I'm thinking I'm probably sitting at my desk way too much. Anyways, let's talk about the differences between them. So when we look at the Leap first, you can see that the, the seat pad itself, it has a bit more of a contour to it than that of the EMEA chair. So depending how you like to sit, this could be a good or a bad thing. It really just depends on your preference. But I feel like this one hugs you a little bit more. So if you have a little bit wider hips, it might not be a good fit, or if your thighs are a little bit bigger, you'll probably feel that some more, and this might be a little bit restricting. The thing about both chairs, though, is that they have these thinner seat pads by design, and while they're very similar in thickness, they feel quite a bit different. So what I noticed, and one of the reasons why I switched to this chair at the office where I sit most of the time, is that in the tailbone region, right here in the back of the chair, I noticed on the leap that I started to get some numbness, some pain developing there, and that was really from sitting eight plus hours every day. When I went over to the EMEA chair, it just felt like it had a little bit more give in that specific region for my body type, and it allows for me to sit comfortably in this chair with no issues. The other thing about both of them that's the same is actually how the front edge or the waterfall front moves when you sit in the chair. And this is really unique to both of these chairs. There's actually like an arched fiberglass piece inside of the mold of the seat pad. 
that works with the sliding seat frame portion. And it allows for, as you can see, as I'm sitting in the chair, you can actually see how when I move my leg, there's this flexing that's happening in the front edge of the seat pan. This is really just to not restrict blood flow, not to be sort of up against the back of your legs, creating an awkward feel. The same thing happens in the leap chair. So you can see when I'm sitting in the chair, it does the exact same thing. Moving up from the seat, Let's talk about the backs. Now we did talk about the adjustments in both of the backs and how they function, but they also have a bit of a different feel. If you remember, I said that I really like the Leap because it has more of a pronounced lumbar. So if you're someone who needs that really good lower support and wants to have more adjustment there, sort of a way to adjust to fit your body specifically, the Leap is probably a better option. You'll also notice in the backrest design, again, much like the seat, it has more of a contoured shape to it. So it's going to hug you a bit more as well. Now the upper backrest on it, because of the design of the plastics, allows for some more freedom and some movement in the back. So you can actually see as I'm in the chair and I'm kind of moving around, it's less restrictive. When you get into the EMEA chair, I think it's a really nice backrest. It has good support, it's got good lower support, a little bit more than like the gesture chair. But when we lock this in place, while there's some movement, some give there, it doesn't feel like super restrictive. It's just, it's not quite as much movement in the leap. So if you want to feel like you can move around a lot more and have a little bit more pronounced lumbar, the leap might be a better fit. The last thing we're going to be looking at for comfort is just the arm pads themselves. And the good news here is that you don't really have to decide on that part of these chairs because guess what? They're the same. They come with the same four-way adjustable arm set with the same arm pad. And I love these arm pads. I mean, I really think they're some of the best out there. Nice softness on the top, no real hard edges either. One thing I quickly want to touch on with both these chairs is the policies coming from steelcase.com if you decide to buy direct from them. First is the return policy. It was recently shortened from 30 days down to 14. They still offer free returns, which is a good thing, but the policy has gotten quite a bit shorter. Additionally, if you're outside of North America, the warranty isn't quite as good as it used to be. In the EMEA region specifically, looking at Europe, Middle East, Central Asia, as well as Africa. Check down in the description. We've dropped a link there so you can learn more if you're in those regions. Hopefully this video helped you decide if the EMEA, again, the most underrated chair from Steelcase, or possibly the Leap is going to be a better fit. Don't forget to check out the next video to learn more about Steelcase.